Hello and welcome to Inside Music, episode number 136. I'm your host, James Shotwell, and it's great to be with you again. If you're listening to this in the States, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. And if you're listening to this from anywhere else, I hope you're having a great time getting prepared for the upcoming holiday season. I'm not much of a Christmas guy myself, can't stand the music, don't put up a tree, but I know it's big for a lot of you out there, and I hope it's going well so far. My guest this week is a great one. My friend Allison Lanza is currently on tour with a band called The Rex, who recently headlined a show at the Pyramid Scheme in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Allison is a merchandise dealer, merch slinger, merch seller, merch person. You know, the person who stands in front of a wall of t-shirts and ensures that the band and herself and everyone else in the crew makes enough money for the night so that they can live, eat, and make a career out of this thing called music. Alice and I met at a crowded coffee shop in downtown Grand Rapids ahead of the rec set at Pyramid Scheme to discuss her career in music. She has a great story of coming from the world of being a total fangirl for boy bands, that's her word, not mine, and turning that into a career in music. She has toured as part of Vans Warped Tour, slang merch for bands like Nothing But Thieves, and is currently looking to the future with bright eyes and a full heart. Allison has a lot of good ideas for 2019, and I don't want to give them away here at the top of the show, but I do want to say that I believe in her, and I think that she's going to pull off something amazing in the months to come. We cover how Allison got into music, where she's going next, and we do it while surrounded by people who were definitely not interested in the conversation we were having. You know, sometimes when you're doing the show on the road, the best thing you can do is try to find the quietest place possible. You would assume that that's a coffee shop, but the first one we went to was actually closed due to the holiday, and the second one had so many people in it that we actually had to wait for a seat. When we finally got one, we did our best to record quietly and quickly, so if there's a little background noise, some pops, some hisses, some cr- crackles in the recording, I apologize, but we're still getting the hang of this equipment, and we hope to resolve those issues in the near future. That said, let me tell you a few quick things before we get to the show. First and foremost, this episode of Inside Music and all episodes of Inside Music are brought to you by Holix, the music industry's leading promotional distribution platform. Now, what that means is that Holix works with record labels, management, publicists, and independent artists from all over the world to share new and pre-released music without fear of piracy. To learn how they do it and gain access to a free 30-day trial, visit holix.com and sign up today. That's H-A-U. Lix.com. I also want to recommend that you follow the show on Twitter. It's at Inside Music Pod or Inside Music Pod. We post updates on the show, stories about our guests, and a lot more information related to life in the music industry. We also have some big things coming up on the pipeline that I can't discuss on the show just yet, but they will be announced first and first on our Twitter feed. So once again, that's at Inside Music Pod. Finally. Due to our attempts to make the show bigger and get it out there to more people, we have to stop playing so much copyrighted music. That means unless the guest on the show very specifically tells us what song to play and clears the song, we need to be using some more public domain material, or for those of you outside the industry, music that you won't get sued for using. So I can't tell you that we're going to listen to the bands Allison is out with right now, but I can tell you I'm going to play a little bit of filler music made by somebody getting paid by YouTube, and then we're going to get to the conversation with Allison. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you soon. It's only 1.14, so when did you get up? Um, About 12.30. (laughs) Whatever time you texted me was basically the exact time that I woke up. I looked at my phone and was like, oh no. Did I oversleep? And I did, but not, I didn't oversleep through this, but I overslept through what I wanted to be awake for, which was like an hour before this. It's fine. Have you been to the Pyramid Scheme before? No, I've never been to Grand Rapids. Oh, really? It's my first time here. Okay, that's fine. How do you like it for the last hour? We're about Um, across the street from the bus, so. Yeah, I woke up on the bus, um, sat in my bunk for another 30 minutes in the pitch black, got (laughs) dressed really quickly, and by that I mean I threw on a sweatshirt over top of my pajamas, um, put on some socks, and uh, rolled out of the bus. There's a really cool mural across from our bus. That's all I've seen of Grand Rapids so far. So. That's all you really need to see. Yeah. You're in like the heart of downtown right now. So. Cool. Yeah, we are missing much. Um, how long have you been on the road? This time? Um, we did a festival in like October 27th, which I like marked the unofficial start of our tour. So then we did like three days of rehearsals and then left for a week with the struts. So it's been like three weeks. Oh wow! 
and you went from warm to cold, slowly getting colder? Yes. I I was like having this weird bout of seasonal depression, but in like the opposite form, which I didn't know was possible, where I like <laughs> was really um was really sad that I wasn't experiencing experiencing the um seasons because I was in LA for so long before. Like we basically had like two weeks off in LA and that's like right when the leaves started changing in Chicago, so I like missed all of the fall because we already have winter now in Chicago <laughs> basically so Fair enough. Fair yeah enough. so I was like oh god it's snowing everywhere like there's leaves changing like I'm missing all the seasons and then we were in Minnesota the other day and I was like yeah I don't miss this I don't miss this at all yeah we had like two days of like sunny weather with all the leaves different colors yeah. and then I flew to Minnesota myself for a few days and we got there and it was like 10 degrees. For us. Like, no, it's too far. When we went in, by the time I got back here, it was already snowing and winter yeah. here. And I feel like we skipped fall this year. It was yeah. like two weeks of fall, and that's really sad because fall's the best season. It really is. Um, I really like this sweatshirt. Is it a Nothing But Thieves sweatshirt? It sure is. Oh my gosh. What else do I wear but you the merch of the, the merch? bands I work for? Oh, when you're on a different tour? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it's nice because they've toured together and also share management, so it's not like a weird, like, I'm literally sporting a band that has nothing to do with the band that I'm touring with. Um, but no, this is just like my go-to hoodie for like load-ins and stuff. And then usually I change into like either some Rex merch to try to sell it or mm. um, just a general whatever t-shirt. I'm also wearing a, a main t-shirt under it, so oh. from, the, from the tour we did with the main. <laughs> You're decked out. You're supporting. I'm always decked out and I'm wearing some Corgi socks, so. That's good. I'm brand. wearing socks that have Pennywise from It on them. Oh, that's terrifying. The whole clown. Oh, that's God. an early birthday present. Oh, that scares me. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. I love a, I love a good sock. I do, too. Socks are great. <laughs> socks are great, except for when they have horror movie characters on them. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Just kidding. <laughs> it's a new thing. I got, like, these. I got one that has Jason on them, and then I got, like, some high art socks that are, like, a Da Vinci painting. Oh, yeah, those socks. are cool. Like I've those. seen those. Those are awesome. You go to a lot of museums. That's, like, the new hot item in museums. I love museums. Yeah. Is that one of your favorite road activities? I wish I had time for activities on the road. I mean, I definitely would if I didn't sleep so late, but like bunks are like coffins and I don't know what time it is Mm because they're so dark. So I always end up sleeping till one. But like if I didn't sleep till one, then I could probably enjoy some museums or something. But (laughs) I don't don't do much of anything. Is there anyone that's an early riser in the Rex? Like someone Uh, getting up at 8 in the morning? Honestly, probably, but I literally don't even know because I'm just not awake at that hour. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah, I'd say there probably there probably are. I know it's just me and Nick, our singer, that literally sleep until basically load in. Well, he'll he'll sleep through load in because he doesn't have to do anything. But I I have to wake up for load in. But he'll like rise up at like ten o'clock or at not ten o'clock at five o'clock sometimes. I'm like, morning sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> So, you've had a really busy year of traveling, right? You I know, sure have. Pretty much all I've of it. I've done five full U.S. tours, very back-to-back, starting February, ending now. Now. In like a month. In the month. And yeah. then you go back out in January? No. No? I'm taking a month or two off, um, unless I get like something really, really cool that I don't want to pass up, but like, as of now, I'm just like, I want to take a nice break and live in my apartment and... The one you pay for. Yeah. Which we'll get to. We'll get to. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> what five, so what five tours did you do this year? Um, I did uh, the AWOL Nation Here um, Here Come the Runs tour with Nothing But Thieves. Then I did the Fryer Brain with the main tour with the Rex. And I did Warp Tour with um, the Entertainment tour. Institute. <laughs> yeah. Good old Warped. Um, then I did the Nothing But Thieves US headliner. And then now this... Uh, Rex Panic Vertigo headlining tour. And I remember there was a time last year when you were like, I don't know what I'm going to do next year. Oh, yeah. I had absolutely no idea. So I moved back to Chicago so I could find more opportunities. And then I ended up not living in Chicago for any of the year. So. But paying rent. But paying rent. That's now, cool. Do you like sublease your apartment out to somebody? I did during Warp Tour, but it just was such a pain to like pack to unpack to pack to unpack to pack to unpack. So I was just like, I'm never doing it again. Like it's more worth it for me to just pay whatever my rent is and do it that way and just have my stuff sit there and like lock my door because like I was lucky one of my friends wanted to move to Chicago anyway but like didn't want to like start from scratch yet so she sublet my place for the summer and then she ended up really liking it and wanted to move in so um, 
we had a like we had a we have a four bedroom and there were only three of us so she ended up moving in so my rent went down which is nice but it still sucks like every month I pay my rent and I'm like eh, this kind of sucks what is this for yeah, yeah like what is the point that's why I like want to own a house because <laughs> like I wouldn't mind paying if I knew I was gonna own it someday or like I knew it was mine but rent is just like oh there's money that I'm never gonna see <laughs> what's the point like I didn't reap any benefits from it. You're just helping your it's friends keep their place. Yeah, it's a glorified storage unit, and I'm basically paying for my friends to live there. Which so you've been, cool. so you have like nine straight months on the road, basically. Pretty much, I had like a week off occasionally. The longest I've been at my apartment was two weeks when I first moved in, mm. in March. Oof. So. That's, yeah. That's rough. Yeah, it's a little weird. And how do you feel about that when you look back at you? Actually, the other day you were you shared some old tweet where you talked about wanting to go on the road or if you'd ever oh, get yes. to go on the road. And now here you are, like a couple years into touring more and more and more. You can't really get much busier than you are now. No. Have you counted how many shows you've done this year? I have not counted the amount of shows, but I definitely like. I had a list of goals for the beginning of the year, and it was like be on tour for three months. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I was on tour for like seven. Like, yeah. If you count the literal days that I was gone, <laughs> it, even though it's been like seven months, mm -hmm. I don't know, that's just weird. So, so do you think you want to go higher next year? Or? No. No. <laughs> you, um, you hit a wall where you're like, okay. I haven't hit a wall necessarily, but like I I think that my touring schedule is going to be a little bit different this year, and I'm kind of excited about it because I'm going to have like more time to be a human and have a social life, which is cool. Like yeah. I never would have anticipated that like this would have been so full steam ahead where it's like, oh, I started like doing this with the expectation of like, okay, maybe I'll like get a tour every so often and then I'll just come home and work at like the venue and work at the radio stations and whatever and like make my living at home but then be able to leave whenever I do get a tour but it ended up just being like a, oh, cool, I'm gonna be on the road literally the entire year basically and then not have anything to do for the two weeks that I'm home and treat it like a vacation and then blow all the money that I earned on <laughs> said tour on my two week vacation. So I like, yeah. So I think like next year, I'm definitely taking January off, probably February too, um, with the ex like with the exception of like one small thing that I might be doing for like a weekend. But like, basically just gonna chill out, have a social life, do things in Chicago for the first time in a while, <laughs> and reap the benefits of paying my rent and like having a place to live for a little bit. Because I'm not gonna stay there past August when my lease is up. Because and just can't justify it just doesn't make paying sense rent. Because I know that I'm going to end up touring for most of the year, but yeah. I'm hoping that it's a little bit different. Like the, I don't have like anything quite locked in yet, but I've got a couple things in the works, and they're all like smaller commitment. Like one of them is like kind of weekend warrior stuff if that comes to fruition. So I would actually be home for a decent amount of the year, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna chill and then like <laughs> move back to Pittsburgh with my parents and just like save money. Is and it? Then, yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone ever really considers that like for bands, they can do like three tours, they're pretty spread out and make their money for the year. But for crew members like yourself, it doesn't really, it doesn't typically work like that. Like you kind of have to go from one tour to another tour to another tour. Right, because we just, yeah, it's kind of just what we do we have to like continue working and because bands will like take breaks to like work on music because that's what they have to do they have to, some like, other obviously you have to like record music so yeah. that you can release <laughs> it so that you can go on tour like so that's their process but like nothing with thieves for example is on like pretty much all year next year they're going to be on break doing like working on their third album so like all of our crew is like, okay, guess we gotta find other jobs for the year <laughs> and then come back at the beginning of next year or whatever, in 2020 or whatever time they're coming back. So it's just like, yeah, it's weird. We just kind of hop around and find work, which is kind of strange. I dread the day that the Rex and Nothing But Thieves have a conflicting time for me. I'm like, I don't know what else. <laughs> I don't know. Is your relationship for like finding these gigs, is it, the bands, or since I share management at this point, is it kind of the management company? It's funny because I've known the Rex for a while. Okay. Um, probably, like, pretty much, like, almost since their inception, I guess, close to. Um, 
and and just for the record, that's who you're out with now. So yes, like, I'm we, out with we never Rex even right said now. that. We're like, yeah. you're just all on the road. Yeah, I'm with Rex right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so basically since their inception, I've known them, and um, this is before you were selling merch. Before I was selling merch, well, I was selling merch on like small, 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 small tours. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I got roped into them though, like super, super last minute, right before the main tour. They're, um, they had their other merch person um, dropped off, like super last minute. So management contacted me, because I had just done the AWOL tour, and they were like, hey, are you available? And I was like, I actually am booked for Coachella, but I would rather tour, so let me bail on Coachella <laughs> and do this instead. So sent a nice email, never got a response from Coachella, shout out, so shout out to them. Um, I understand, it was like five days before, that's kind of that's shitty, but. Um, but what a position to be in, just to be able to be like, I turned down Coachella. Yeah, it was weird. I was like, oh, I could tour with one of my like favorite bands growing up, or I could go to Coachella and sweat in a box for a month, because that's what I was going to be doing, basically, lost yeah. and found in a box. Oof. So I was like, ah, hmm, I'll take them in. Yeah. Probably better so, money, too, in the long run. Yeah, I mean, it was about the same, honestly, but, like, it was more about just, like, the adventure wanting to be touring and yeah. wanting to tour with the main and the Technicolors and, like, finally go on tour with the Rex, because, like, it was something that we'd always, like, talked about, but they just never had the budget for a merch person, like, when I was, like, take me on tour, take me on tour. Because <laughs> when they did that all-time low tour, that's, like, all I wanted to do. But, I mean, I was on Warp Tour anyway, so I really could not have done it if they had asked, <laughs> but they also were not able to take me on that one, so it's okay. We're doing a show with All Time Low, two shows, the, two shows with All Time Low at the end of the year, so there's that bucket list check mark. <laughs> one more. Sometimes I, feel, I find, like, when you start doing, when you find yourself just working constantly in the music industry, you kind of have to appreciate, like, those bucket list items. Yeah, exactly. Because the rest of it's just a job. You're exactly, like, that's what kind of sucks about it. Right? You're like, oh, I've, I made it. Oh, I made it. <laughs> like, it's just. Yeah, dude. like, this was my hobby growing up, like, going to shows, and, mm -hmm. like, I would have, like, I, I don't know. It's, it, it's weird to go from, like, my hobby being going to shows to my, now my entire life revolves around going to shows, and I get paid to do it, and, like, that's great, but also I have no hobbies. So, yeah. it's, like, it's a weirdly, like, depressing thought of, like, oh, like, once you're. Once your hobby becomes your job, like, what do you do? Like, what do you look forward to outside of it? Like, I can't go to shows anymore and just, like, enjoy them mm -hmm. if I'm not working, which is really Sweet. sad. Yeah. yeah. Like, I very, very, very rarely can, like, go to a show and not, like, stand there bored out of my mind because I'm just like, I should be doing something. Like, I feel like standing here isn't going to do me any good. The only <laughs> time that I ever, like, notice that that doesn't happen is at arena shows because... I'm not on that level yet, so I'm just like soaking it all in. Yeah. But and there's the spectacle of it yeah. all. Like it's a sh it's a show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I get that. Yeah, it's weird, <laughs> and it's really strange too because the only band that I could feel like I can go watch a full set of <laughs> and enjoy every second of it is Nothing with Themes, and it sucks because <laughs> I work for them. <laughs> like, I get that. I get that. like I don't get to watch them. I did the weird act of uh, paying for a show the other day oh, in advance. So strange. Months in advance, and so I was strange. just like. So strange. What show? This need to breathe tour uh, okay. because I, I can probably get in, but I want to guarantee I can get into the show right. I want to go to. I get that. I buy tickets so, all the time. So I bought tickets, but in the back of my mind, I was like, "This is so weird. If people just spend money like this all the time. How irresponsible!" Yeah, it's really strange. <laughs> I mean, I always like buy like small show tickets and stuff yeah, for I don't like, mind my supporting friends, like a friend, but like, who's, like I got it a ten dollar cover. Yeah. Yeah. But like, when you find yourself like, especially if there's like a pre-sale you have to oh, get yeah. in on, you're like, so "What's this?" Yeah, I signed up for one of those like Ticketmaster um, pre-sales like when they oh. first started doing the, the verified fan. Oh yeah, thing. yeah, where they text you and everything. Yeah. So weird. I think it was like for Harry Styles. Yep. And like, I got a ticket. It was great, but it was just such a weird thing. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this because like, scalpers can also just enter the code. Like, I don't know. <laughs> now you're a commoner all of a sudden. Exactly. It was really strange. Very strange thing. It's it's strange. You gotta like check your privilege. You're like, oh, this is like what it's like for people to just go to shows. <laughs> right. I like think about that all the time. That aren't um, going to a hundred a year. I know. It's very strange. Like I thought about it today. Or not today, like recently, um, like my little cousin's girlfriend, like mm -hmm. she is like a big fan of the band Hailstorm, which I just like think is the funniest thing, like the most <laughs> random band for her to like love. Yeah. But my friend was their um, photographer on this like last tour, and I think like moving forward too. But 
nonetheless, I like hit her up. I was like, if there's a Pittsburgh show, like I would love to bring Riley to um, to a show. Like she doesn't go to shows very often. Like mm-hmm. doesn't really have a lot of money. Like it's not something that like she does often. Um, but I would love to like be able to take her. And she was like, oh yeah, like we'll hook her up with like meet and greet, whatever. Like blah blah blah. Like. Is she cool? And I was like, I think so. Like, I've never seen her in that environment. Like, she doesn't go to shows. Like, and yeah. it's just it's like a foreign concept to me. And like, my my middle school best friend tweeted once and was like, I can't believe the only concerts I've ever been to are the Jonas Brothers. And I almost responded like, that would have that would not have been the case had we stayed friends. But <laughs> I get that. it's just so weird. Like, the her like second show was like a 1975 concert like last year, and I was like. Mm-hmm. Or like a couple years ago, but I'm like, whoa, that's so weird to me. Because like that's literally all I did. There's a period before uh, the girl I'm dating now. I was I went out on a date with somebody and we went to see Shania Twain together. And oh my god. Show and she was like, this is like my fifth show ever. And I was like, you're 32 whoa, years old. Like what do you mean? So weird. You know, I was like, what have you done with the rest of your life? Like, right. How do so, you feel your time? So strange. <laughs> I, yeah, it's so weird to me that like some people just like don't go to shows. This seems like such a like, some people like a rare event for them. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, that's cool. I feel like, in a way, it makes every show you see more special, because, like, now I'm such a harsh critic over everything. Like, regardless of if I worked in music or not, like, if I went to a show, I would be so, like, critical because I've seen so many. Yeah. Like, it's just, this everything is just I will compare to another yeah, show. Yeah. And, but, but yeah. then I see like I see that girl that's sitting outside the pyramid scheme right. right now. I assume that there's another girl with her. There's just one when I walk by. They're probably ha- yeah. She's probably holding a spot for a friend. There's but, there's a lot of them. That- sometimes I'm like I will never be that excited about a concert, probably ever again in my life. Right. I it's like just- I think about that all the time. And it's <laughs> so annoying. Like what's it like to spend 11 hours waiting outside to get into a show? I did it once. Really? One singular time. Okay. For who? All Star Weekend. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. I remember All Star Weekend. I sure do. <laughs> I definitely, yeah. Um, <laughs> How long were you outside? Um, I got there at 11. The show was at 7. Okay. Um, it was snowing Oof. and freezing raining. And it was my first ever bar show. I was 14. Great. Um, it was in the strip district of Pittsburgh at Alter Bar. Okay. And my dad came because my mom would not let us go alone, me and my best friend. Um, so your dad waited outside all day. My well. dad kind of just bopped around the shops down there because there's a lot of like good shopping down there, and like we love the strip district anyway. So he was just like, "Well, you guys can wait in line. I'll check on you every like hour or so. Like, mom doesn't have to know that I'm not like sitting with you this whole time. Like, and she would be crazy if she thought that I was gonna do that anyway. Um, so he like went to this like Italian market and got some Parmesan cheese and like all this like random stuff. Just killing like, time. Going to like the marketplaces, yeah. Just getting some like just killing time, staying warm because it's it was freezing. Um, we would all trade off because there's like a McDonald's right next to Ultra Bar where like we would all just go get coffee and like come back or like hot chocolate and just like sit oh, in now line. Now there are other people in line, I'm assuming. Yeah, there were a bunch of people in line. Now okay. the whole thing was kind of lame because I waited for that long, but then they had like a VIP package and like I ended up in like the eighth row and I was like, I waited here all day, so <laughs> <laughs> this kind of sucks. Like had I known about that, I probably wouldn't have gotten here so early. But the whole thing was just very funny because on the way there, my best friend was like. I'm really excited to meet All Star Weekend finally, but like someday I really want to meet Daniel Tosh. It was like the weirdest, most left field thing ever to say, like especially as a 14 year old girl. Yeah. I was like, who's Daniel Tosh? Mm-hmm. Sure enough, I like can't make this up. We we're standing in line about like two o'clock. Daniel Tosh walks up to us and is like, "What are you guys waiting in line for?" And my best friend starts like freaking out, and I'm like, "What? Like, what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> like, who is this man?" And she's like, "That's Daniel Tosh," and I was like, "You're literally lying. Like, what are you talking about?" Sure enough, Daniel Tosh, in town that day, at one of the local theaters, Weird. asked us why we weren't at his show, and I was like, I don't even know who you are. Got a picture with him, and then was known for the rest of my high school career as the girl that met Daniel Tosh. Like, at that's an All Star Weekend show. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's the last time I ever waited for a concert, but it was also, um, after the show, like, 14-year-old Allison, like, hung out with everyone, like, outside of their bus, like, just had like a 30 minute conversation with each of the guys from the band and like that was when it clicked to me that like they're just normal and like I was like wait these are just like literally the most normal human beings that just have a really cool job yeah and then I was like I could do the same thing and then that's when 
the I gods come like, off the yeah, mountain. Yeah, that's when I was like, all right, goodbye fashion. Yes, goodbye fashion. <laughs> goodbye fashion. I look at my outfit. Hello, music. Um, Haven't no, I looked back since. <laughs> the first time, it's so funny that those two stories of Jonas Brothers and All Star you put together because the first time I met those guys, <laughs> yes. they were on tour with Secret Secret Dino Club oh in the same God. van, and they stayed at my apartment. And then we went to a Jonas Brothers concert, and they were promoting outside. And handed out right? all of their CDs together. That's so. That's funny. how we met each other for the first time. That is hilarious. Yes. So that was an obvious transition for you from one thing to the next. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely a natural That's transition. So wonderful. I went from Jonas Brothers to Justin Bieber's All Star Weekend. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. It was something. Uh, this year, I think, I think when Brock Hampton was here in Grand Rapids, I met some kids that had been outside since like 8 a.m. and I was just like, "What do you do? Like, did you skip school? What are you doing right. here?" Right. It is wild, like. Especially now that VIP packages are. I think you guys have VIP packages for this tour, don't you? Yeah, they're super, super interesting, actually. We're doing a game show. Um, okay. The guys really don't like the idea of, like, a standard meet and greet because it's just... It's weird. It, it is a weird thing. Like, I, I'm not... Like, VIP is where I want my career to start going, but I still don't know how I feel about VIP packages in general. Like, I'm at, like, a very clear standstill as someone that was such a, like... I mean, I was a teen girl music fan. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, we we have that like background where like I understand, especially like our VIP package doesn't include early entry. Which like, mm. thinking back to my experience at that one All Star Weekend show, like I get why. Like, yeah, I waited in line for all that time and still like ended up towards like the middle of the venue. Like. Why? I was that the third in make, line. And That's you not were cool. arguably a bigger fan than the person who just buys a VIP. Right. Like, I didn't want to spend money on a VIP package to guarantee that I would have a closer spot. Like, I, I don't like that idea. Um... Which is cool because that's that's what the Rex fans like. The, when the Rex decided to do this whole VIP thing, they asked their fans like, "What would you like to see in a VIP package if we were to do one?" Because um, we don't want it to be just like a meet and greet, and they don't even do it as a meet and greet. Like we only do photos at the end if there's still time after, and we just have a little bit of time to kill. We we'll just have our photographer take um, photos for the um, for everybody, but they still hang out after the show. So it's like you're not getting anything like you're not meeting them mm -hmm. as part of the package you're you're doing a game show with them which is quite interesting um so we do like this three round game show that's hosted by our singer nick and then each of the other four guys in the band take a team of the kids that sign up and they all compete against each other in like a um family feud style game show and then the winner the winning team of that round gets taken to the next round and then they're broken up into um, like they're just themselves for that round and then they compete against each other in band trivia so whoever like knows the most about the band or like can guess the most uh, right answers about the band um, then move, the two winners of that move on to what we call a physical challenge and we have two nerf guns and some bowling pins with the guys faces on them and whoever knocks down the most pins gets to spin the prize wheel and the prize wheel has a bunch of merch on it so it's like it's a very interactive experience where they're like working with the guys and like having a lot of fun. Like it's been yeah. really great so far. It seems like everyone's really enjoying it. But it's cool because it's like it's a twenty-five dollar add-on. It's nothing like that's a it's really not expensive. Reasonable it's price. very reasonable. Yeah. But it's just like it's nice because yeah. VIP can go really well or it can go really poorly. <laughs> and <laughs> I think that they're doing a really good job with it. Or I'm having fun like because I got to like help create it and I get to help run it and check the kids in and it's cool because it like directly aligns with where I want to go anyway so yeah I think 25 cool. is reasonable I was like when I back right. to this need to breathe tickets I just bought so they were like well, let's say 60 bucks a ticket but then Yikes. Yeah. they have two VIP levels which already oh. I'm, already I'm upset about like right. now there's so it's a hundred dollars you get like a picture, an autograph, and then my least favorite VIP item, early access to merch, which is just like, you already gave us $100. Right. Go ahead and buy shirts right away. Yeah. And then if you do the plus, you get to, uh, there's something else that you get to do. Maybe like you're guaranteed the autograph. Like the other one's just a photo, but if you want a signature, you have to get the other level. That's lame. But I know in the past they've done the higher level, you get to like play ping pong with the guys. Yeah, like, that's, that's cool. That's fun. Yeah. Like that's a memory. Right. Like, I'm not going to remember just taking a picture with you. Right. It's just dumb. Yeah. I hate like, yeah, the, the idea of just like a meet and greet VIP is yeah. so weird to me. Mm -hmm. Like... I feel like it was like 30 Seconds to Mars that had like the most ridiculous pricing on their VIP packages. 
and it was literally just a photo. And I was like, well, Justin McCartney is rocking a hundred and twenty-five dollar photo. Which is so weird. Like, why? Yeah. He hasn't done much. Like, yeah. I mean, sure, maybe like the childhood nostalgia, but like, uh, that's he's playing huge so caps strange. too. I mean, he's doing a twenty-five hundred cap room here in Grand Rapids in February. Weird. Okay. Like, Interesting. Are there 2,500 people? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would be very curious to know how tickets we're doing for that. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess if you can thrive on being, like, a nostalgia act, then, like, you can make... With one song? Right? I mean, we only all know that one song. Yeah. I mean, kind of. I knew I knew a lot of uh, well, I mean, teenage girls. Like, you're, you're definitely in the target market loved. more than I am. Yeah. I loved uh, <laughs> Jesse McCartney at one point in my life, but <laughs> definitely. I mean... Well, let's look at my history. His <laughs> brothers, Justin Bieber, Justin McCartney, just falls in line. It all falls in line, definitely. The click definitely. five. Uh, um, yeah. Do you want to get into VIP next? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What makes you excited about that? Just the idea of that it, personal experience? Yeah, I love, I love, 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 love being able to provide an experience for fans. I think that because I, I mean, everyone that works in music is a music fan. Like, you don't decide to do this if you didn't love music with every fiber of your being. It's yeah. not like the paychecks are good. Or if so. you knew anything else you could possibly do. Literally, like if yeah. there was, that's like what I always tell people when they ask me for advice. I'm like, if you can think of doing anything else in this entire world, do that. Because yeah. if, if the only thing on your mind is music, then you're gonna do fine. But if you have any kind of gut, anything that's, that's telling you no, follow that gut. Like my gut was just like, the only thing you care about is music. So you have to do that. So that's, that's why I did it. But, um, yeah, I think that especially having that background as such like a, um, such like a fangirl background or whatever, um, I really love the idea of providing an experience for fans um, and getting to be part of the reason why they have such a good day at a show. Because that's, I think that's the thing that I always try to remember whenever I'm having like a bad day or like have to deal with some like venue nonsense or something or like I'm just like not feeling that great or something is that like the um, the uh, the idea that these fans like this is this day is everything to them like I remember counting down from shows like oh my god ten days from now I see my favorite band like nine days from now forever like they do that all the time and they they care so much and they're so excited and it's so cool to be able to be a part of like making that person's day like an amazing experience so being able to take that into like the VIP space is something that like I've always really wanted to do but never really knew how to get involved yeah. in that um, so now that I've been able to like work some local VIP things and like start working on this program with them and um, possibly doing some VIP stuff next year um, on the road um, yeah it's just like super cool to think about like you started to find the path to actually doing it yes like the companies that are behind these yes. packages and things like that yeah <laughs> yeah it's deep inside baseball that we're getting into right here with all those companies and things like that yeah, yeah basically there's like there's so many of them but like there's like a couple that are huge yeah so. they're massive yeah and you can tell because all their packages are kind of the same but yeah. like they have tiers and stuff like yeah. that no, I think I think, and I think that that's going to be more and more important. As this is something I talk about all, all the time on the show, but I like the like. I feel like we're really at a point where it's like there are too many bands and there are too many shows and there are too many festivals. Oh, yeah. And the only way to really stand out is to have something that everyone else doesn't. And that VIP package thing is right, exactly. one of those angles. Yeah, that works. I was reading an article the other day, and it was like it was talking about just like different VIP experiences. And for me, like some of my favorite ones that I've ever worked are like the ones that have like a full exhibit of their career backstage, where mm -hmm. you go and as like a VIP, you can go look at um, all of the different like things from their career. Like I was really upset that I was on tour for when the Noel Gallagher um, tour came through because like. I was, like, Oasis is one of my favorite bands ever. Just, I've always had, like, this love for that band. And um, I was always Team Noel. And <laughs> he came through and did this uh, this cool, like, VIP package with, like, backstage, um, like, a museum with, like, handwritten lyrics from, like, different Oasis songs and, like, platinum records and, like, all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, yeah, I was really sad that I missed that one, but I worked um, Avenged Sevenfold, and they did a very similar thing, um, which was, that was funny. Just the same. Yeah, exactly pretty much the, same. the exact same thing, but yeah. with uh, 
Ooh, with uh, Adventure Seven Full More Sun instead of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like they had a place where like, um, I was reading, I think it was about Metallica and they had, um, they had their like, all their guitars and like pedal board setups so like you could play their stuff, like play their instruments. Like that was so cool. I was like, this is such a weird concept, but like go play their instruments. Mm -hmm. And then G-Eazy did one where if you bought his VIP package, he'd have his own personal barber like cut your hair. And I was like, that's what the one. heck? That's so sick. That's so sick. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. So interesting. So it's just like, yeah, what makes your uh, what makes your package stand out is so important, and that's why I love that these guys do like a game show. It's mm -hmm. so random, but it's so fun. My favorite new thing that I've been seeing at shows a lot. Uh, I just saw Pretty Much, for example, and they mm -hmm. have like the uh, I like when bands bring their own photo backdrops and stuff. Yeah. Like they have a couch that says Pretty Much yeah. and has the tour. You can just take your picture on it. Like, oh, that's my yeah. new favorite like, that's tour so thing. Sick. Because everyone's going to take a selfie anyway, so why not? Right, why not provide? put your branding in it? They did not like... have a photographer person though, so like mm. it was just kids being like, hey, can you hold my phone? Uh. And like girls dressed up for the show just hanging on the couch. Of course. Being like the hot girl at the boy band <laughs> show. You know, because they're yes. going to see you in the back of the room and obviously right. pull you up on stage. <laughs> they did pull a girl up on stage for one song, and it was the best girl because she had, she was so shy, she couldn't look any of them in the eyes. Aww. So they're like, and they have like a video screen, and right. there's a like campfire, and they pull out bean bags, and they're all sitting on bean bags together. Oh my together. god, that's so fun! And she's in the middle, and like they, they're singing, and as they get into like the, the, the you know, the snaps come in, they all start rocking back and forth, and she's just like, Staring straight. She has oh a big smile, goodness. and they're like trying to lean on her and be like, she's like, to her. she's like, I can't, I can't. And they eventually stand up and they pull her up and they start like trying to dance with her and stuff. And she can, she's like twirling around with them and singing the songs with oh them and stuff. Oh my and I was like, god, she's never gonna forget this. That's so cute. It was amazing. It's like uh, when I really, really wanted to be the one less lonely girl, with Justin Bieber. <laughs> back. Sad day. Um, yeah, that's so cool. I love that, that okay, kind of so, personal thing, too. <laughs> so you're out with the Rex until the end of the year. Yes. Let's do a quick recap. And then you're yeah. home for a while in Chicago. Yes. Work some retail. Work some retail. Do some, do some real jobs. Yeah, I'm honestly really stoked. <laughs> um, you're going to see your family in there at some point? Yeah, I'm going home for Christmas. We, um, we end the 20, 20, 22nd in um, Milwaukee with the main and all-time low. And then I'm going to drive back to Chicago with a friend and then hop on a plane at like 8 a.m. and head home for Christmas and then stay home for like a week. Okay, any uh, New Year's plans? I'm gonna head back to Chicago and find something to do. <laughs> yep, gonna Fair drive enough. my car back because I haven't had my car in a Hang out long with the time. Chicago crew? Yeah, I figure Ooh. it's better than sitting at home in Pittsburgh and doing absolutely nothing on New Year's. I mean, so. <laughs> Pittsburgh has its scene, but Chicago has such a tight knit community. Pittsburgh's of people. great, but none of my friends live there anymore. Yeah. Everyone's kind of up, up and left. That's the problem up. Yeah. Yeah, kind of lame. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird, because I feel like like Philly and Chicago, people gravitate towards, but there's yeah. no real reason why. I mean, right. Chicago more than Philly, but Philly, I'm always like, what is this thing that's happening? Philly's all right. Why I mean, I'm, I'm trying to hate Philly, because Pittsburgh. Because you're from Pittsburgh? But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That rivalry. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love Pittsburgh. I'm excited to move back, but mostly just because it's so much cheaper. Well, since we're so close to the year, give me some goals for 2019. Yeah, that's where we're um, I want to go international. All right, you haven't um, done that yet, right? No, I haven't. Okay. It's a bummer. You got your passport ready? I, my passport's been ready. Okay. Yeah. International. What else? The VIP thing, obviously. Yeah, I want to head into VIP. All right. Um, just enjoy, like, take some time off and remember why I love doing what I do. Yeah. Um, it's important. Yeah. I think it's that's a, very important. It's a different kind of burnout. Yeah, just kind of like take care of myself more, I think. Try too. to get excited about music again? And like not the, that I'm not excited, way. but like, yeah, I would like to be able to attend a show that moves me or something. Like, I don't I would like to attend a show and not walk into it being like, we got like an hour and a half of that headliner goes, like, right, you know, just like, thinking about it as a technical aspect. My new thing. My recent obsession is I go to a show and I start doing the economics of the show where I'm oh, like, man. when I get sold out, I'm like, okay, well, this is a 1500 cap room, $20 <laughs> a ticket. And I'm trying to figure out like what the guarantee right. is based on the room. Oh my God. That's my new favorite. That's my new way to pass time when I'm bored at a show. <laughs> like, um, Danny D. Kane was in town this week. Oh boy. They did a 2500 wow. cap venue and they sold less than 300 tickets. I was going to so, say, how did that even do? Yeah. So I was oh. sitting at home and I was like, I, I had a friend that was like, oh, they did, they sold like 260. Yikes. And I was like, oh. okay, well that's, so bad. that's not, that's no money. They made no money tonight. Yeah. They, they probably like walked away with pretty much nothing. Yeah. I was like, I hope they got a guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> 
if they, yeah, if they didn't. Ooh, that's really unfortunate. I'm sure they probably had a guarantee, but yeah, rough. That's I forgot that they were back. It's yeah. weird. I think everyone did. Yeah, I think that's why they only I had a lot of people ask tickets. me, like, what is a Dana Decane? And I was like, a weird do argument you, for having a comeback. I have a first day. <laughs> it's the only song I know. That's more than I knew. I was like, they had songs. They had a song. Like, that's yeah. pretty much it. And I think two of them open are opening acts, so it's yeah, like a whole tour package. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 so yeah. weird. It's a weird that idea. Such a strange concept. <laughs> it's like when I was on the AWOL tour, two of the guys that play in AWOL are also in Iron Tom, and they opened So Is Iron Tom and Nothing to Thieves in AWOL, so they were playing two sets tonight, which, like, was sick. Iron Tom's a sick band, but yeah. I was just like... God, I wouldn't even like having two sets a night. Like, mm -hmm. dang. But it's smart money. Yeah. You get a double cut like that. Uh, that yeah. Charlotte tour right now. They manage every band that's opening for them. Of course they do. So like that's they get a so piece sick. of Sleeping with Sirens and right. a piece of that's Knuckle so Puck and a piece sick. of Matt or the Dose. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they're I just learned, like cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. I learned all about that from when One Direction brought out Five Seconds of Summer. Yeah. Voice. But, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite business move. Yeah. It's such a power move to be so like, sick. we're gonna cash in on all of this. Right, and then Five Seconds of Summer did it with Hey Violet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they make that money before they even get on stage. It's so, like, so funny. Take a piece. It's so crazy. <laughs> this is just so weird. That's some good inside baseball for people at home. They'd be like, what? Yes. Yeah, like what? Fun fact, uh, Joel married Nick Martin and his wife from Sleeping With Sirens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he presided over their wedding. I had no idea. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Oh my god. Yep, that was my recent piece of like crazy music industry trivia. Oh, that's that I so random. I love mm. that. Huh. <laughs> um, okay, where's the tour going in the upcoming days? Because this will be out pretty soon. So, post yeah. Thanksgiving, where are you guys going? Or actually, are you, you're off tomorrow, obviously. Yeah, Thanksgiving. we're off tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Are you going to actually eat Thanksgiving somewhere? Yeah, we're going to um, Nick, our lead singer, um, his family. Is, so, our show. After Thanksgiving is in Buffalo. He lives in Wellsville, New York, which is like an hour or something outside of Buffalo. So we're all rolling in, like we're parking the tour bus outside of his house, um, and bringing like the entire tour package of like 20 people to his family's Thanksgiving. It's funny because I got a text the other day, like I tweeted yesterday or two days ago about being excited to sleep in my own bed, and I got a text from Nick's dad being like. I have a bed for you after Thanksgiving, after the best meal ever, hashtag, um, hashtag many vegetarian options, hashtag squash, hashtag eggplant farm, like all this stuff. I was like, aw, like, that's so cute. They're making a whole vegetarian thing for me. I was like, my own family probably wouldn't do that. But I'm excited to spend my first uh, Thanksgiving without my family, with my, with my second family. So it should be, should be all right. And then you're going to Buffalo? Yeah, we do Buffalo, and then we do some West, or I mean East Coast states, um, I think. And I don't even really know where we are half the time. That's I'm the beauty pull up the of routing. sleeping on a bus. Yeah, exactly. Wake up I don't know place. where I am. Yeah, we're doing like Buffalo, and we hit the, hit the East Coast for a bit, and then we rock down into Texas and then drive back to LA to do a sold out Troubadour show. That just oh, sold out the fun. other day, so that's super sick. So the tour's sick. going really well. Yeah, it's going well. We didn't even talk about how the tour is going, but it's fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> going well, yes. It's, it's their second headliner. Okay. Um, and they've already moved up to, when we're doing like 300 to like 500 cap rooms, I think, like a couple of them have been sold out and they've all been like really, really, really energetic shows doing well in merch, like the VIP things are cool, the package is awesome, Bad Flower is such a sick band, and so is Gil Casino. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just, it's fun to watch the show every night, which is definitely cool. Nice perks. Yeah, I've been very, very lucky to tour with only good bands, <laughs> yeah. like bands that I genuinely enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, and now can't we've complain. about your career, it's good. Where can people follow you online? I am on everything at Allison Lanza. Is that two L's it's and It's two Allison? L's and an I. A-L-L-I-S-O-N. Yeah, I didn't even think about the I. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta point out the I. Yeah. It's yeah. the only correct way to spell Allison. I agree. Yeah, I don't like those Allisons. Yeah, I always wanted to switch. Like, I, uh, <laughs> growing up, because I loved Allie and AJ, too. Like, I'm typical pop 
pop girl. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I always wanted to change my name, the spelling of it, to A-L-Y-S-O-N because I thought that Ali Mishaka was like the coolest human being. And I was like, I want my name to be spelled like that. So for a long time I went by Ali with A-L-Y. Okay. Never made sense because my name Never was not out. actually That's cool. spelled like that, but it's fine. It's it was fine. great. It's, 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 it's totally fine. fine. I dropped the Ali thing because it's weird. Everyone just calls me Lanza now anyway. I don't really have a first name anymore. If everyone's, if everyone's wondering, I, I suggest your Twitter feed because it makes me laugh a lot. Thank you. I you really real try to keep it. it slightly depressing, but in the funny way. It's like all Twitter. Yeah, in that exactly. Way. Slightly depressing, oh, yeah. but in the funny way. Yeah. Depression, but make it funny. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's my brand. I feel like I'm not as good at Instagram for that reason. Like, I try to bring my sadness into Instagram. Yeah, and it's Instagram's like, we're not a weird thing because it's like, yeah, everything has to be peppy at all times on Instagram, which is yeah, yeah. not the way life works. So. No, unless you're like really into Walt Disney. Yeah. Like, people that have Oh my like, God, those Disney, Disney, Disney oh Instagrammers, God. I'm like, where do you even buy this stuff? Like, yeah, you spend so much I, money I on know. years. I don't understand it. Yeah. I like wish I did. Like I like Disney. Don't get me wrong. I wish I understood it. I wish I, I could just, afford to go oh, yeah. as often as you do. Yeah. I've been to Disney twice. So and we both know people that have gone like eight times this year. Oh yeah, <laughs> crazy. Like, do you? But yeah. like, amazing. I yeah. I don't have the money to spend. So on go that. see the Rex on tour. Yes, go see the Rex. Follow Allison online. Yes, follow me. And uh, listen to Need to Breathe, obviously. Yeah. Not Need to Breathe. Nothing but thieves. And Need to Breathe. That's fine too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always screw that up because on one's planet. MBT and one's NTB. So sometimes you're tweeting about MBT, and I'm like, oh, we like the same. Oh wait, wrong, <laughs> wrong letter order. I actually never listen to Need to Breathe, so well, okay. I'll get on that. I only listen to Nothing but Thieves because you talk about them so much. That's honestly what a lot of people have said. So me, that's so good. I'm glad that I'm also not only their merchandise manager but also the head of their street team <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing and uh, lastly any uh, simple advice for all the people that'll be like but how do I do what you do never stop never stopping just kidding no, I love that That's <laughs> great. No, no, I always tell people like just start doing it and yeah then one exactly. day somebody will maybe offer you money to do it yes exactly like I, I did so much like free stuff which is so unfortunate because I want to tell people like value yourself and like don't take that kind of treatment but at the same time like I can't say that I got paid for my first three tours and um, yeah I mean just in general um, Respect the music yourself, industry but... is more about genuine connections than networking mm -hmm. um, you won't get a job from someone you meet once um, I mean maybe you will but that's rare um, Focus on establishing genuine connections and friendships with people because they're rare, um, but they're the most effective. Like, I wouldn't have any of my jobs now if it weren't for the friendships that I've built over the years. Um, and it's literally their friendships, not like working relationships. They're yeah. friendships that turn into working relationships, which is cool. Um, and just, yeah, keep working. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do things, especially. If you're a fangirl, <laughs> you can make it a career. You can make it into a career. <laughs> I did it. I was told by this kid that sat next to me in my uh, web design class my freshman year that you're just a fangirl. You'll never do anything cool. Well, now. What are I, they doing uh, these days? I don't know what he's doing. Probably I as hope a kid. he's doing all right. I mean, he was a nice enough kid. He just That was a one comment that I was like, mm, you're going to eat your words someday. And so, he did, because two years later, uh, he followed my magazine on everything when I was running a magazine, and he would like all of the posts. So I was like, hmm, interesting. That fan feels girl, good. Huh? Fan girl, huh? That feels better than strangers liking your stuff. Yeah, exactly. I was like, mm, okay. Mm, Glad you took notice. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I right. don't want revenge. Just well, thank you for talking course, for 46 minutes. I love talking. As long as clearly. you've been awake. Yeah, basically pretty much. doubled it. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Yes, um, I would say I would be at the show. I'll be at Bob Seger, which it's is okay. I understand. It's a big building right down I the street. It. I mean, this is farewell tour. Yeah. The Rex are like barely on yeah. the Here we are. Yeah. Tour. Don't worry. <laughs> we will be back. <laughs> um, Absolutely. All right. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Woo.